This is part two to the series called Let Go of Control and Control Self. You know, there's a story where Neville was drafted in the army and he wanted to get out. But when he was drafted, he did not want to go. And they told him, isn't this the act of a coward? And he said that he didn't care what they said. And my question was, why? Why doesn't he care what, he, what they have to say? And it's, his idea was that everyone's idea of a coward is different. Everyone's idea of good and evil is different. So it doesn't really quite matter what people say because you might be good in one eyes and evil in another. Um, it's, the, the trick is to not care about either, to go to what you want, to imagine what you want. But I want to touch on something before we get into the armor story. It's when Neville wanted to be with his second wife, when he wanted to remarry. And I remember reading where he wanted to remarry and he thought to himself, well, how am I going to divorce my current wife? And he hadn't, he didn't have communication with her. So he was wondering, well, how am I going to speak to her when I don't have contact? Um, how am I just going to ask her for a divorce when I haven't talked to her in so long? And it, I, he probably was thinking it's going to be uncomfortable with the interaction. There's going to be conflict and oh, what is she going to say back, etc. And he admits that he forgot to exercise this law. Yeah, Neville, you know, the, you know, Neville who teaches this stuff forgot to exercise it. In that moment of questioning the how, I mean, we all do this, so there's nothing to be uh, ashamed about. Everyone forgets. And, but he did not blame himself. Instead, he went straight to the law when he realized that. When he realized that he was questioning, he went to the law. And what is the law? Well, in his eyes, it was to fall asleep as the man he wanted to be. And he let go of all the hows, and he slept in the assumption that he was married with that woman. He fell asleep as the one he wanted to be. As he says, he says, never blame, only resolve. So back to the army story. He must have learned to let go of the how because when he had people implying he is a coward and he didn't care, he learned that he must fulfill his heart's desires, to ignore what the outer reality is saying to him and to fulfill just his desires and imagination. And who else can fulfill the, desi the, the desires in your heart other than you? He imagined he was out, but then he was quickly rejected. Now here's where I think many of us miss this lesson. He imagined what he wanted as though he already had it. He slept in a room with men in a tiny bed, yet in his mind he was in his room with New York, in New York with his wife and child. He did what he wanted inside. But after he did this, he was rejected. After rejection, what did he do? Did he say, well, this stuff doesn't work. I imagined and nothing happened. I was rejected. The world is just simply greater than my mind and I can never get what I want. Did he react neg negatively to his rejection? Maybe a touch, but who wouldn't? But did he complain? Did he feel that he cannot get what he wants? Did he stop imagining what he wants? No. And honestly, I wouldn't get mad if he thought that. It's only natural to feel that. But we're not called to be natural. We're called to not sin. We must not sin. Neville was able to not react after rejection because Neville was not imagining to get out, in a sense. He was imagining who and where he wanted to be. And this is the huge difference. If he was imagining just to get out and control the outer world, guess what? He just got rejected. From this intention, he is going to feel completely defeated. If that was his sole purpose, was just to make something happen, then he lost. But he imagined to change his mind, to change his feeling of I. He imagined to change the only thing that is being expressed, himself. Now Neville at this time knew he could change reality if he changes himself. Since he was solely imagining on changing the feeling of himself, he was able to persist regardless of circumstances. He did not care what others said, where he was at in the world, or his rejection. He only cared about imagining what he wanted. He let go of controlling the outer world. He let go of trying to force it, and he changed himself. And he said that when he was doing that, he would feel so much ecstasy that when he was training with the men in the army, that during training, all he could think and feel was himself being in New York and feeling ecstasy. It was just... Like he, if you will, was bubbling up within him. He didn't even care about the training. 
but um, since life is reflecting self, and self is everything you think you have and are, and he changed what he has, which is he's in New York. He has his wife. He has his kids. And he changed, and that implies something about him, that he's freed from the army. And he felt that he was that person. For the scene implies something about you, and you must become the thing it is implying. The scene is there to simply imply something about the self. And he could have thought after he got rejected, was just like, I'm stuck. I have to stay here. Instead, he changed himself. He changed to what he believed he was and had in his mind. He believed he was back in New York, that he has his bad, his wife, etc. He has what he wants in his mind. Now, this is a quote from Neville. This is how I do it. When I close my eyes and this, this world is shut out, and I, like Isaac, am blind to the outer world, then I feel myself into the state of my desire. With my inner eye, I see it all around me. I sense its solidity. And when my five senses are awakened, I have the feeling of relief, knowing it is accomplished. So Neville removes the idea or concept of there even being an outer world when he imagines. He then feels what he wishes and sees what he wishes. And that's the great secret, to do what you wish in your mind. You are truly the most high in your mind. You are so powerful in your mind that nobody can imprison you but yourself. Nobody can free you. You can only free yourself. You are the ruler in your mind. You can be a king or the peasant. It is entirely up to you to how you desire to be in your mind. And don't think in terms of things coming to you. Think in terms of things coming from you. This means it was within you all along. And that you can't ever lose a state. You might fall out of a state, but you can never lose states. They're always within you. And... I think that's a good, I think that story about Neville being rejected and yet persisting in his assumption and yet it came into being regardless of what the circumstances was is a powerful story that we all can understand and learn from. And um he let go of controlling every little thing in the world of what people are saying and what they're saying to him. He didn't he could have revised you know them calling him a coward but he just didn't care. He didn't care what the world told him. The world, the world told him that he was a coward, that he's rejected, he has to stay, he has to be in the army, and yet he got out. <laughs> the world told him that he had to remain in his marriage or he was. Um, there was a very difficult way for him to get divorced, yet it came about in such a natural way. Both these stories are, I brought them into, uh, for our understanding because with the wife's story, he forgot to exercise the law, and I think we've all been there. Yet he didn't shame himself or get mad at himself. He just applied it. And with the army story, he was rejected. And yet, even with the rejection, he was still able to persist. And that's an ultimate rejection that he literally was told, you can't go. And he went to sleep at night as the inner man who already left. He persisted in being the inner man. That was his goal. which was, And the inner man is his true self. So he changes his conception of the I. As I said, the I is the inner self. So he changes who he is inside. He creates a scene where he's with his wife and his child. Even though he's in a bunk bed with a bunch of men in the army, he imagines himself in New York. But who is in New York? The reality of him is in New York. The only reality that exists. It's a person. It's himself. So he feels himself to be that inner man. He didn't, um, you know, try to imagine his his furniture perfectly and make everything look perfect. That wasn't the point. The point was to imagine a scene that implied something about the self. It's all about the self. Don't fall into the pitfall of trying to make your scene perfectly or make everything look perfect. It's about what does it imply about you? Does this scene imply a change that happened in you, and is it the change you want to see in yourself? And in this case, Neville said, yes, as I'm in New York now, I'm with my family, and I'm freed from the army. That's my new conception, so this is implying. So he persisted in that, in, in being that person, not in the imaginal act, but in what it implies about himself. He persisted in the implication of it. He persisted in the new self. That's why he was so... 
Um, that's why he felt so much ecstasy, because he knew he was that person now, because he believed he was the inner man who already is expressing that, regardless of what the external says. The inner man doesn't ask questions. He doesn't look to your circumstances and says, no, I can't, ima I can't, I can't be in New York, I'm sorry. No, in an instant, he's in New York, regardless of what the world says. No questions asked. No, Neville believed himself to be that. Same when it came to him being married. He wasn't, he was actually already married to another woman, but, you know, they didn't, I think they married very young, and I don't think they kept uh, communication. But he wanted to remarry to a different woman. And he fell asleep in the assumption, regardless of what his current conception, which, which was, you already are married, and you got to figure that out. He didn't bother with it. He just fell asleep being the new man who is married to the woman he wants to be, happily married. So these are just states that he has fallen into and he got himself out of it. And we can do the same if we know they're just states. So I hope that these uh, two stories are very empowering and I think they offer a, um, a lot of insight into the daily practice of this.